In this video we're going to have a look at using X topology to create a simple narrowboat definition. A narrowboat is typical of some of the vessels used in the inland waterways of the UK canal network. There are lots of different sizes of vessels but depending on the, the size of the canal and its kind of history. One that I've chosen is a, a typical 60 foot uh, long vessel, 2 meters wide. Definition is going to be really simple, considering that the boats are primarily made of, of very flat shapes, uh, as simple as possible. So we're looking at like rolled steel, uh, things like that. And in this image here, you can see pretty much the, the dimensions of the vessel I'm using. So I'm not technically designing it, but I'm just representing it and showing up how uh, a curved network can be used to represent this kind of hull form. So we're going to use X topology to represent a narrowboat. Uh, the narrowboat I have is mostly defined by coordinates at this stage, so we're not necessarily doing much interactive design. Um, it's primarily about showing how easy it can be to build up a whole form just from outline curves. Uh, the, the whole form isn't particularly complicated, and there's no particularly complicated shape. It's more a case of just showing how to, to make the definition. So We'll start out by making a, a center line definition. Uh, this one's going to consist of about six or so points. This curve's going to be knuckled throughout, so I can simply turn that into a, a polyline. And now at this stage, we can pretty much define the coordinates. So our stern end is going to be on the, the center line. Um, we've got a top of a skeg at 0.551 which drops down to the bottom at 0.767 and then we go forward uh, it's not as long as I've drawn here the 60 foot narrowboat is around 17.4 meters long <clears throat> for the top sides well we've got a stern deck that's at 0.5 I've gone a little bit too far um, yeah, this is 1.5, and the main deck's at 1.5. So now we've defined the size of our vessel, um, we've got a bit of space, we can start to draw in the other curves. So the next one we'll go for is the, the deck line, so again, got a bit of shape here, and I'm just drawing it in, in 2D it probably looks wrong, yeah, it's all projected onto the center plane, but we can now go through the process of sorting that out. So, we're going to have a, a per kind of perfect stem rounding. There, and then we're going to go up to 1.5, I think. No, next one is at 1, and then we're 1.5 throughout. Uh, and of course, the breadth of the vessel is 1. And we'll put in some coordinates here. So these are slightly more needed. So as we go forward, um, we lower deck goes through 2.529, and then steps up at 3.051, all the way forward to 15.558. So now we've got some, some shaped points, and we can add some shape. So mostly this is going to be all knuckles. Uh, we could add or put it in by straight, or we could make them all knuckles. Um, well, that one will probably make a straight, and that one we can make a knuckle, it doesn't really matter. We've got a circular aft end, so if we set that to Y, we can get a nice tangent there going on. In actual fact, that knuckle hasn't worked because we picked up that from there. So we'll remove the knuckle and pop a straight in. And of course, we've got to pop in the straight for there. And there we've got our, our shape. The next curve we'll go through for is the kind of flatter bottom. And this basically consists of four points running from the skeg to the bow. Uh, our point of the stern is 3.543. And that runs forward to 14.718. Now, obviously, we don't need Z height. Uh, there's our curve, and we'll pop in a, 
straight for along the side. So at this point we could also drive up the other ones for the flat of flat of side area. If I set that to a, a section then it will pick up that point there as an intersection directly. Now I need to put in some shape around here to finish off that linear segment. And if I make this a water line, it will pick up that point there. <coughs> and this one's going to be similar. Pop in a straight and set the y tangent there. And to finish off, we have that effect. So, we're pretty much there in terms of our definition. Uh, at this point, we can see how it goes with the surface. So, now we see the patches, but this can be slightly, slightly misleading. So we'll pop on the contours, and this will show us how we're going. So we can see immediately on the bottom there, some weird stuff going on. We haven't set that to be a knuckle line, so we'll do that. That sorts that one out. And around the stern here, we've also got a selection of knuckle lines. Which will tell those areas to be flat as well. We could, in this particular case, consider working with a bilinear Bezier blend because we're not really working with much curvature continuity. Um, it's all really quite simple rolled shapes. So we can simplify the surface definition in this way. Of course we can do a mirror, look at it in perspective, if we're interested in a bit of colour, we can also render it up. So that pretty much ends this phase of, of making the actual whole form itself, but now we could go on to actually use it. So if we wanted to go and do some hydrostatics for example, we could start out by checking the calculation sections, because Obviously we want to make sure that the definition is picked up and this one's so simple it should be reasonably straightforward. Um, once we've checked the calculation sections then we can start to use the uh, whole form itself. So just looking at basic hydrostatics, you can see we've got the water plane displayed. Let's go for a draft of 0.6 and we can see that we've got a displacement of around 18 metric tons in salt water. Noting that this is an inshore or inland waterways vessel. Of course we can now go on to have a look at some of the other characteristics. So if you look at wanted to look at the kind of stability characteristics of the vessel, uh, we could do things like a, a GZ curve. And this would allow us to understand for example when are we getting any deck edge immersion and this particular one it's quite hard to see. I could go th through the process of adding a deck immersion point um, without too much challenge, um, but that's kind of covered in, a, in another video.